So right here, I've got the ASRock Desk Mini 300 series. This is an upgrade over the 110 series in that it now supports eighth and ninth gen Intel CPUs on top of the already sixth and seventh gen CPUs. So you've got a lot of flexibility with this unit and you've got two slots of DDR4 sodium memory support. Today, we're gonna to be adding in two four gigabyte sticks as well as an i5-9400 since this does support CPUs up to 65 watt TDP. So you can put the 8400 and the 9400 inside with the stock Intel cooler. You should be okay. You can also put an 8700 in, but it will be slightly throttled at the 65 watt TDP limit. On top of that, you've got M.2 support and ASRock have thrown in two SATA cables as well. So if you wish to put a SATA SSD inside, you can still do that too. And the best thing is you've got a VESA mounting support kit which right here today, we're gonna to be mounting this unit on the back of a monitor. So with this unit, you can say goodbye to those all-in-one PCs that have all those proprietary parts. Put this on the back of a monitor, and if something goes wrong or you wish to upgrade a particular component, then you can do that with ease with this unit. And now the best thing about this unit is it's currently coming in at 157 US dollars on Newegg right now. In terms of Aussie pricing, I'll update the description below. I don't think it's quite hit the Australian retail channels yet. Before this price, you get the case, the motherboard, as well as the power adapter, the two SATA cables, USB 2 front extension, as well as a DCOM support. And you also get the dual band M.2 Wi-Fi kit included as well. And also a VESA mount, but I'm not sure if the VESA mount comes included with the $157 price tag. I think you got to spend like an extra eight bucks to get it. But of course it's an optional extra. I'm pretty sure not everyone's gonna be mounting their desk minis to the back of some budget monitor like I'm gonna do here today. And now the unit itself comes in just under 900 grams, but if you wanna add in a CPU, M.2, and a cooler and some RAM, it'll come just under 1.2 kilograms. Dimensions is 154 mil by 155 millimeters by 80 millimeters in depth. So it's a very small unit, smaller than my hand, and very lightweight. But with all that aside, let's quickly feed the birds outside on my back porch. They're making some noise. Then we'll get on to building this thing, testing it out in some easy to play games like Apex Legends at 720p, and then also see if it can run 4K Netflix. Since it does have a DisplayPort 1.2, HDMI 1.4, VGA, and two USB ports, one gigabit per second NIC, and then at the front you get USB Type-C and an extra USB 3.1. And so there it is, all mounted and ready to go. We picked this monitor up, of course, off a used deal in the used parts on of the month. I'll put the link up here if you haven't seen it already. 50 Aussie dollars, and that's about like 30 something USD. So absolutely dirt cheap to pick one of these monitors up. And since this box is pretty small and uh, pretty cheap, you can get yourself like an all-in-one solution like this for next to nothing. But that aside, let's install everything and boot this thing up. So now we're finished up over 10 minutes of stress testing. Everything is installed on this PC and the temperature tests are looking really good. Uh, it hasn't even hit 80 degrees and that's considering the fan is just on silent mode still. Uh, I just let you guys quickly try and listen to it. Yeah, like that's how quiet it is. It's still whisper quiet. And the funny thing about the i5-9400 is six cores, but they're going at 3.9 gigahertz and they're only using up 46 watts. So this CPU's uh, even more refined than the 8400, at least from what I'm seeing here on the desk mini. Now, I also got the FLIR 1 temperature uh, IR sensor out, and that's showing that the VRM is getting to about 86 degrees and everything else is well controlled. I mean, with 45 watts being dumped in the case, it's not that big of a deal. You, know, you probably hold your hand up to 45 watts and not get burnt. Wait, you probably would get burnt on 45 watts. <laughs> Don't take my word for that. So we're now on the BIOS for this H310 STX motherboard. 
And it's got the option to up the DDR4 memory speeds to 2,666 megahertz. There is, however, no CPU control, at least with the i5-9400. And another thing about the i5-9400 is I couldn't install the latest VGA drivers. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to play Apex Legends, but we'll find out anyway. Uh, in terms of the USB speeds, I tested them out. They work perfectly fine with the fast transfer of my Kingston external drive. And also the internet speeds are very smooth on the NIC and both the wireless. However, in terms of the ASRock BIOS itself, it's got good detail, it's got good features, just like you'd expect out of a typical ASRock BIOS. Got the hardware monitor ability to update your BIOS via an internet connection. And in this case, we're able to tune our memory speeds. So we're gonna try and set them to 2,666. And lastly, the biggest differences between the Desk Mini 300 series versus the 100 series is the ability to go up to that 2,666 megahertz, up from 2,400 megahertz, but also the M.2 now supports uh, SATA as well as NVMe PCIe. In the original 100 series, it only supported PCIe modules and they are a little bit more expensive or they tend to be more expensive than the SATA modules. I'm using a 500 gigabyte that I bought brand new and I got that for around 70 US dollars, so it's ridiculously cheap. And then of course you get the eighth and ninth gen CPUs, but in this case, this 9400 is just sipping power. So we're gonna see how well it does in Dota 2. Hopefully it plays Apex Legends. But no. I'm doing it for reals. Real thing, man. I'm doing this. This just feels so weird. Like this just feels weird. Not only is it slow, it's hard to use. Feels so that's my first time using a trackpad while trying to play games, and I'm just gonna say it's gonna be my last time as well. But Dota 2 itself, the performance was actually better since the last time I've used onboard HD graphics. I tried it, I think, like a couple of years ago. And now on Dota 2, we can play 1080p lower settings, but at 100% screen resolution, getting around 80 average FPS. And the 0.1% 1% lows are actually decent too, coming around 50 and then the lowest I saw was 30. So very smooth experience for Dota 2. And the good thing about the i5-9400 is that all the cores are running at 3.9 gigahertz. I believe that's up from the i5-8400's 3.82. Yeah, there's baby Maggie, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you feeling that 20 FPS? Are you feeling it? So unfortunately Apex Legends did terrible. The lowest possible settings at 720p, everything just dropped. Uh, we were getting around 30 average FPS. So you'd have to be desperate to play this game on these HD graphics to play Apex Legends. Um, of course, it is playable. It's just, you know, it's a terrible experience. But the 1%, 0.1% lows were still decent in comparison to the uh, 30 FPS number where we saw them drop down to like 17 and 12. So there's that. And on top of that, we also tested Cinebench, 942 points. Pretty impressive considering we we're using so dim memory. I managed to clock that up to 2,666, which was pretty good. And then the power consumption as well from the water meter while we we're doing a fire strike combined test was about 50 watts. And then the idle power consumption on the desktop in high performance mode was about 25 watts too. And then the last thing was the fire strike test where the physics score went over 12,000 points. So that's a pretty good score considering we're using 45 watts uh, with the CPU. And then the GPU score was really bad coming just over 1,100 points. So basically in a nutshell with the CPU performance, it's really good. GPU performance is lackluster, but we're gonna see if that GPU performance right now is able to run 4K Netflix smoothly. And reveal new wildlife dramas So 4K Netflix, I actually didn't get a proper test. I think it wasn't in 4K because Australian internet, it is that bad. But um, the 4K YouTube demo was very smooth. Uh, it's 4K 30 Hertz uh, because it's not HDMI 2.0, so it's HDMI 1.4. 
But I mean, human eye can't see more than 30 hertz anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> But ultimately, Tom's Hardware had it right with the wording, just buy it, but they unfortunately had it on the wrong product. This here at $157 is a really good buy if you're looking for a small form factor case. I mean, I was just so impressed with it because of the low power consumption. I mean, the onboard HD graphics is obviously the Achilles heel in this product, but everything else is amazing. The size, the fact that you can mount it onto the back of a budget monitor, and so you can really make a budget office PC or a budget uh, desktop PC or a budget anything really, budget Netflix streaming PC, or in this case, you could even set up um, super nodes for whatever or a little server. So possibilities are endless with this thing. I love what they've done in terms of making it even more budget oriented in the fact that they've added M.2 SATA and not just M.2 PCI NVMe. The memory speeds also help out a little bit as we saw with those gaming benchmarks. Some of the best numbers I've seen out of the onboard HD graphics, but don't expect to play things like Apex Legends, but you can definitely get away with playing Dota 2, bit of CSGO and League of Legends. Should be fine at 1080p. And of course, small form factor, lightweight, makes this thing really good. The wireless connectivity included is really strong too. So I was getting four bars throughout this whole studio. And uh, sometimes on my other devices, for instance, on my Intel NUC, I only get three bars from right at the end of the studio there. So included Wi-Fi is pretty strong. Everything checks out on this unit. I'm very impressed with it. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit that like button. Also, let us know in the comment section below what you think of the Desk Mini. Uh, me personally, I'd love to see an AMD solution, especially with what we saw here with Apex Legends. I think if we had like a 2200G in this thing, four cores with that uh, better beefed up onboard graphics, I think we could see some better numbers playable on Apex Legends. I'd love to see that. I'm gonna request ASRock do one of those because this form factor is amazing. Also on that note, ASRock did send this out uh, as a review sample. And they are a channel sponsor, but if you've seen my earlier content, you know that doesn't affect my opinions whatsoever. And with that said, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.